I read an article from theconversation.com published in May 2017 entitled The Barkside, Domestic Dogs Threaten Endangered Species Worldwide. Any animal lover will find this article very poignant, and by animal lover I mean a person who cares about all animals, not just dogs and cats. In fact, it's debatable whether or not dogs are even animals. Dogs are man-made creatures. Humans created them through selective breeding. They are not the product of evolution. They are not the result of natural selection. They simply are not natural. That is why I call them monsters. They are not a natural part of the ecosystem like other animals. They are wreaking havoc and causing tremendous damage to the ecosystem. Dogs are like a science experiment gone wrong. We bred these abominations into existence. And now, like a plague, they are killing off species that evolved naturally over millions of years. Nature is suffering greatly because of dogs. The article states that wolves were the first animal domesticated by people sometime between 15,000 and 50,000 years ago. There are now an estimated 1 billion domestic dogs across the globe. Domestic dogs, it says, include feral and free-ranging animals such as village and camp dogs, as well as those that are owned and completely dependent on humans, otherwise known as pet dogs. The latest research reveals that the ecological paw print of domestic dogs is much greater than previously realized. Clicking on latest research brings you to a page where it's explained how domestic dogs have contributed to 11 vertebrate extinctions and are a known or potential threat to at least 188 threatened species worldwide. These estimates are probably conservative, it says, due to biases in the species, regions and types of impacts studied and or reported. This means that the numbers are probably greater. It says predation is the most frequently reported impact, so dogs killing wild animals, followed by disturbance, disease transmission, competition, and hybridization. Hybridization means the dogs are mating with the wild animals, creating hybrid offspring. So the original natural wild species is dying out. Regions with the most species impacted are Southeast Asia, Central America and the Caribbean, South America, Asia, Polynesia, and Australia. It says dogs are the third most damaging mammal after cats and rodents. Quoting from the article, we found that dogs are implicated in the extinction of at least 11 species, including the Hawaiian rail and the Tonga ground skink. Dogs are also a known or potential threat to 188 threatened species worldwide, 96 mammal, 78 bird, 22 reptile, and three amphibian species. This includes 30 critically endangered species, two of which are classed as possibly extinct. It says predation is the most commonly reported impact of dogs on wildlife. The typically omnivorous diet of dogs means they have strong potential to affect diversity of species. For instance, dogs killed at least 19 endangered kagu, a ground-dwelling bird, in New Caledonia in 14 weeks. Threatened species with small population sizes are particularly vulnerable to such intense bouts of predation. Aside from simply killing animals, dogs can harm wildlife in other ways, such as by spreading disease, interbreeding with other canids or wild dogs, competing for resources such as food or shelter, and causing disturbances by chasing or harassment. For example, contact with domestic dogs increases disease risk for endangered African wild dogs in Kenya. Part of the problem is that when wild animals perceive dogs as a threat, they may change their behavior to avoid them. One study near Sydney found that dog walking in parklands and national parks reduced the abundance and species richness of birds, even when dogs were restrained on leads. There's a link to a study that shows how wildlife will see dogs as potential predators and abandon their natural habitats. Dog walking in the woods leads to a 35% reduction in bird diversity and a 41% reduction in abundance. 
None of the studies mentioned such indirect risk effects, which suggests that their frequency is likely to be much higher than reported. The article states that in some cases, dogs have been shown to be beneficial to wildlife, and they give the example of how dogs can flush out and control feral cats that are threatening wildlife. So dogs are not all bad, but the bad they do outweighs the good by far. It says more research is needed to get a better picture of the scale of the problem. They say it's critically important for ensuring the conservation of wildlife threatened by dogs around the world. In a more recent BBC.com article entitled Dogs Becoming Major Threat to Wildlife, it says conservationists in Chile and elsewhere see urgency in controlling the impact of free-ranging dogs on wildlife. It says it found dog owners were not concerned about the issue, and many allowed their pets to move freely in the wild. I suspect this is the case worldwide. It says of the around 200 species said to be threatened by feral and free-ranging dogs, 30 are classed as critically endangered, 71 endangered, and 87 vulnerable in the IUCN Red List of at-risk species. It says studies have shown that dogs contributed to the extinction of at least eight species of birds, including the New Zealand quail. Pictures of feral dogs hounding and killing endangered species in different parts of the world have also emerged on social media. Among the most striking ones are a snow leopard hounded by three feral dogs in Tibet and a polar bear surrounded by three free-ranging dogs. The lynx gets very disturbed when it finds out that there was another predator in the cave feeding on its prey. In Chile, nearly 70% of Pudu, the world's tiniest deer that were brought to rehabilitation centers, were attacked by dogs, according to a study published in the scientific journal Oryx. A study in more than 30 national parks of Brazil found that 37 native species were affected by the presence of domestic dogs. In India's Rajasthan state, less than 100 great Indian bustards and endangered species remain, and even they are being threatened by dogs. Quote, this problem has been going on and growing in the Indian Himalayan region for more than 10 years now, end quote, uh, says Abby Vanak, an invasive species expert who has authored a number of reports on the issue. He is now studying how far dogs get into tiger reserves in India. A main issue is the spread of diseases from dogs to wild animals, notably rabies and canine distemper. There have been repeated outbreaks of these diseases among critically endangered Ethiopian wolves, for instance, as well as of rabies in India and Nepal. There has been a spate of dog attacks on penguins. 58 penguins were found mauled to death by dogs on a beach in Tasmania last October. A month later, 30 more penguins were attacked and killed by dogs. And they don't think feral dogs are doing this. It's implied pet dogs are to blame because it states in the article, quote, it's a problem that we try to eliminate with encouraging dog owners to keep their dogs locked up at all times, end quote. Last May, Two rare yellow-eyed penguins were killed by dogs in a wildlife reserve in New Zealand, where there are signs that clearly indicate dogs are not allowed. Again, in March of this year, 14 dead penguins were found mauled to death by dogs in Tasmania. As long as people are allowed to own dogs, and as long as we tolerate the presence of dogs in our communities, this is just going to keep happening. There are five recognized kiwi bird species. Their numbers have been plummeting over the years due to the introduction of dogs and cats into their habitat. After much effort, only two kiwi species are no longer on the endangered list. The biggest threat to kiwi chicks are stoats, which are a type of weasel, and to adult kiwis, it's dogs. Cats also kill kiwi chicks and ferrets frequently kill adult kiwi. I will link you to an article about a kiwi that was killed by a dog in New Zealand. Everyone recognizes this as a problem. The article states, quote, we know that dogs are the biggest killers of kiwi in Northland 
And although most dog owners are good people and act responsibly, still some steadfastly refuse to believe their pets could kill a kiwi. End quote. It says dogs not under control can kill kiwi really easily. These birds are very fragile, and it doesn't take much of a bite or a dog mouthing them to kill them. If we want to keep having kiwi in our backyards, it says, all dog owners need to keep their dogs under control at all times. Now, I'm thinking no one can possibly keep their dog under control at all times. Dogs are always going to escape and get away from their owners, no matter what. They are masters of escape. You always hear about dogs somehow getting out, somehow getting free. They are always getting away from their owners, even when the owners are trying to keep them under control. The damage dogs do to birds is not always direct. The BC SPCA is asking pet guardians to be sensitive to migrating shorebirds and nesting birds. Dogs running off leash on beaches and tidal flats often rouse flocks of shorebirds who then swirl in circles looking for another quiet place to land. While the birds may not be hurt directly, the harm done to them is indirect. If the birds aren't able to feed and build their energy reserves to fly to the next staging ground in their migration, they could perish in flight. Ground nesting birds are extremely vulnerable during the breeding season. Disturbance, particularly from dogs, will flush birds from their nests and prevent them from settling, leaving their eggs unattended and exposed. The impacts include birds failing to nest or eggs failing to hatch, chicks dying from cold or lack of food, and nests becoming vulnerable to predators. A BBC article published April 5th of this year called Isle of Man Dog Walkers Warned to Avoid Nesting Birds states, quote, dog walkers on the Isle of Man have been warned not to disturb vitally important breeding colonies of ground nesting birds. Police have reported several dog attacks on birds in the Aries, I don't know how to pronounce, Aries National Nature Reserve in recent years, end quote. Another article published in 2015 called Dogs Cause Big Issues for Tiny Turtles at Point Vernon explains how dogs threaten nesting turtles in Australia. It states, quote, Dog owners have been urged to keep their pets off the beach in front of ESA Park at Point Vernon to help protect the hatchlings. It says the beach is designated as a dog-free area because turtles nest there. Unfortunately, pet owners are disregarding the signs and walking their dogs on the beach or allowing them to wander on the beach, end quote. I see this all the time where I live. Dog owners ignore the no dogs allowed signs that are clearly posted at the beaches near where I live. And it's the case everywhere. I hear stories about this from around the world. People that witness dog owners just ignoring the rules thinking they're above the law, selfishly going where they're not allowed to go with their dogs. They just don't care. Killing of feral and free-ranging dogs as a solution has been quite controversial and has been banned in several countries. Quote, killing campaigns to reduce or eliminate dog populations is not only inhumane but ineffective, creating a population vacuum that is quickly filled by an influx of new dogs from other areas, end quote, says Kelly O'Meara, Humane Society International's Vice President of Companion Animals. I would like to know, why is it controversial? Why is it considered inhumane to shoot dogs on sight, but not inhumane to shoot deer or moose or whatever else people like to hunt? People are killing farm animals by the billions every year, that's not considered inhumane. Why is it inhumane to kill dogs? This is hypocrisy. This makes no sense at all. Those animals, the moose, the deer, the pigs and the cows, they are not harming people. They are not out there destroying wildlife, infecting people with rabies, 
attacking people in unprovoked attacks, they are harmless. Yeah, okay, a pig will attack you, but that's only if you're keeping it confined in a space. In nature, they would leave you alone. They would avoid you. But you're keeping them in these conditions where they're stressed out. And of course, they're going to be under a great deal of emotional stress and they're going to attack their handlers sometimes. But the fact that people think it's inhumane to kill dogs, but not other animals, is ridiculous. Why don't we kill all those new dogs that come in? They're talking about an influx of dogs from other areas that come in to fill the vacuum. Well, kill them. Just keep killing them until they're gone. I don't understand. Quote, the key to addressing conflicts in an effective and sustainable way is to gradually reduce the dog population through humane dog management programs involving the spaying and neutering of dogs to curb the overall numbers and then mass vaccination to ensure the population is healthy and disease free. What a bunch of work that would be. What a bunch of money. Isn't it cheaper to just shoot them? Conservationists say that although several studies have demonstrated the problem exists, there has been no comprehensive proposal looking at solutions. Well, I have a solution. Kill the dogs. Kill them on site. Hire people with guns to shoot them. Unless that happens, and with populations of humans and dogs on the rise, wildlife will likely continue to be threatened. Exploring possible solutions to this major problem, the article mentions vaccination and desexing campaigns to reduce disease risk and overpopulation problems. They say we should focus on responsible dog ownership, removing dogs without owners, and reducing access to food waste. Well, you cannot force people to become responsible owners. No matter what you do, most people are just plain dumb and selfish. And they won't act responsibly just because you want them to. Even if people try their best to control their dogs, I promise you, they won't be able to. Dogs are notorious for somehow getting out and escaping from their enclosures and breaking free from their owners. The only viable solution to this grave problem is a full worldwide ban on dog ownership, as well as massive culls. Dogs are a menace and they will continue to threaten wildlife, as well as domestic animals and humans, until they are completely eradicated. In my next video, I will discuss how dogs threaten humans. They are monstrous abominations, and it's time we put an end to this horrible science experiment gone wrong.